Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Ajmera Realty and Infra India Limited Q1 FY 2023 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us today Mr. Dawal Ajmera, Director of the company, and Mr. Nitin Dawsi, Chief Financial Officer. As a reminder, all participant signs will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nitin Bhavsi, Chief Financial Officer, Ajmera Realty and Infra India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Ajmera Realty and Infra India Limited first uh, quarter financial year FY23 conference call. I hope all of you, your families and your loved ones are safe and in good health. We will begin the call with opening remarks on business and financial highlights from the management followed by Q&A session. Before we begin, I would like to state that some of the statements in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, reflecting our future outlook and they involve certain risks and uncertainties the company may face. The investor presentation and the price release based on the financial results adopted by the board have been uploaded on the stock exchange website and can also be downloaded from the website of the company. I would like to now invite our director, Mr. Dawal Ajmera, to begin the proceedings of this call. Over to Mr. Ajmera, please. Thank you, Mr. Bhavisi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is safe and sound. Uh, on behalf of Ajmera Realty, I would like to welcome you to this earnings call for the first quarter FY23. Uh, I'll be discussing the highlights of this quarter, followed by financial performance highlights from our CFO, and then we look forward to take up question and, an an question and answers and any suggestions from your end. So let me begin with giving you, a, you know, about the real estate outlook which we have seen over the last one quarter. You know, despite we all are experiencing that last one quarter has been a tremendous geopolitical scenarios happening and a lot of changes happening in terms of the U.S. economic slowdown, the Europe having some state issues, Russia and Ukraine conflict. But having said that, you know, what we observed and what we saw that real estate in India had seen a resilient performance and it was always been, you know, up the ante even while all these uncertainties were going on. The economics of the world are facing through challenges like supply chain, disruption, logistic, logistic bottlenecks, and upward pressure on commodity prices. The structural reforms undertaken by government, strong fundamentals, and dynamic policy formulation have helped the Indian economy maintain consistent improvement in macroeconomic performances as compared to other economies. The synergy of first-time home buyers, pent-up demand, preferences of larger homes and second homes and easing of mobility restrictions and improved appetite of spending have resulted in uh, improved sentiments towards the real estate. Although over the last one quarter, we saw that uh, the interest rates have increased in terms of home loan, but still uh, there was a bit of a resistance here and there, but overall we still saw good demand coming up. And with all these, you know, work from home culture slowly, slowly coming down, we are seeing a great demand in the commercial real estate also, which is coming back on track. And we've been hearing news about the great demand and buyers happening in commercial offices uh, uh, in and around, in, I mean, in Bombay and other places, which is, you know, looking at owned offices or flexible working spaces. So these both are really looking and doing well. Uh, coming to Ajmera reality, I would like to highlight some important developments that happened since the beginning of FY23. Firstly and foremost, our pro Maki project, Ajmera Manhattan in Vadala, uh, in the suburbs of Mumbai, we had have we have had a very very successful launch, you know, which which was our which is our main uh, project, and we are very proud that today. Ajmera Manhattan brings a complete, when we started off this name, we made up a theme of New York based lifestyle, New York based culture, which we wanted to bring in the city of Mumbai. And that uh, we successfully have done this and we have seen uh, a great uh, response coming for those, uh, for that kind of a project. 
you know today manhattan is a 500000 square feet of carpet area approximately project which is of two towers overall sales value of about 14 to 1500 crores and with this you know we have seen that uh, you know the work also has started in a very very robust manner where we've already completed the excavation uh, of uh, one of the towers and both the towers and foundation work of one of the towers is uh, almost done as we speak today and it is also significant to know that 25% of the inventory is already sold in as of june 2022 our mid state project greenfinity is a self funded and sikova our boutique commercial office is also 60% sold of its inventory both these projects are set to complete in fy23 our residential development code name juhu in mumbai has been recently demolished and i'm glad to announce that as we speak today we have received the commencement certificate of the project and where we have already applied for era so very soon we should be announcing sales but we have already started construction because we've got the permission finally coming to the much awaited acquisitions of code name ghatkopar where the land has now completely acquired from tata communications through our 100% subsidiary and the plan is to construct a nice residential tower potential of about 95000 square feet which will give us a generate a revenue of about 250 crores in the next 3 years so having said that you know we have maintained a robust launch from ajmera manhattan uh, which we launched in the month of april and looking at our acquisition plans successfully acquired and now on the process of launching of of selling gatkopar and juhu which total to about you know both both put together the new projects put together is about 400 crores of top line so this shows you know we are moving in the right track and uh, as we have discussed earlier we are on our track to launch our projects which we have planned uh, over the next two years uh, and uh, we should see in this we should see an addition from whatever we are launching we have another one 11.8 million square feet of land bank or area fsi available from our existing land bank we are also aggressively looking at inorganic growth opportunities within our company through our low capex of acquisitions like jv jda da models where a lot of active discussions are happening and we should be hopeful to close a few soon this brings me to end our business highlights where i would like to thank all our stakeholders at ajmera reality to help us achieve our 5x growth plan and we are moving towards that and with our all recent launches and the new upcoming ones we are very sure that we should be achieving our 5x growth plan very soon i would request uh, nitin bhai to please uh, go through the perform the performance of uh, the financial performance of fy23 and this quarter to everyone thank you thank you mr ajmera i will take you through the operational and financial performance for the quarter first fy23 ajmera realty has opened the financial year with a very high uh, performance and expects to further accelerate as we move on we achieved sales value of 400 crores recording an exponential growth of 261% on a yoy basis and about 2.3x on a qoq basis mainly on account of manhattan pre sales which is about 354 crore in the first quarter of launch it is significant to note that it is comparable to the entire annual sales of that of financial year 22 which is about 431 crores we witnessed impressive growth in sales volume and collection too sales volume about 157000 square feet which is a 155% on yoy basis and 130% on qoq basis we recorded collections at about 210 crore which is an impressive growth of 93% on yoy and 126% on qoq basis the realization has improved to 25411 rupee per carpet area which showcases an upward trend due to high velocity of mumbai projects i am pleased to share that we have achieved this growth numbers despite headwinds from the higher input costs upward revision of the repo rate and other economic challenges This strong performance was a result of successful project launches and good traction in our existing project 
on uh, sales and execution side both coming to financial performance for the first quarter our revenue stood at 25 uh, 55 crores and ebitda at 18 crores and ebitda margin at 33% pbt at 15 crore and margin at 28% and pet at 12 crores and margin stood at 21% percent. the revenue of 55 crore includes the first time revenue recognized on the pocm method for part sales value of completion visibility on account of the greenfinity project we maintained our normalized margin at about 9.5% despite the inflationary pressure on the pet basis coming to debt we further reduced our debt 20 by 25 crore in quarter 1 fy23 due to traction in sales and collections All our advanced stage projects have been delivered with no no outstanding project debt. The weighted average cost of debt inched up by 40 basis points to around 11.6 percent as on 30 June 22, and our debt equity ratio stood at 1.12x of uh, net worth as on 30 June 22 compared to 1.1x as on 30 31 March 22. We have strong visibility of around 709 crore from our existing portfolio. From our advanced stage projects, we have balance revenue from sold inventory, which is about minuscule 30 crore, and the balance and sold inventory revenue is about 155 crore. From our uh, mid stage projects, the balance sold and unsold inventory revenue is 169 crore and 372 crore respectively. Front end debt cost. payments which we made uh, under the concessional scheme as on 31st of december for manhattan and jew project is really helping us to further accelerate this particular revenue recognition process as we move on we further estimate total rev- potential revenue of about 2100 crore from our uh, launches in pipeline during the next 2 years of an estimated carpet in square feet Our total revenue from the existing and recently launched projects is about 700 crores and 1500 crores, respectively. 1500 I refer to Manhattan project, bringing the total revenue potential of about 4300 crores on these projects. We are confident in delivering a strong performance in the coming quarters, along with a robust pipeline of quality projects in execution and as well on the launch, which will further help us on our pipe growth. Of course. with an organic initiatives as the world by mentioned on this note i would like to conclude my remarks and now we are open for q and a session and as well for your suggestions thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Anyone who wish to ask a question may please press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the queue assembles. First question is on the line of Rahul Talwar from LKP Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Um, so I had a couple of questions. Uh, am I audible? Yes, please. You are audible. Yeah, right. Uh, sir, so my first question was on the total revenue. It has significantly declined, declined, both as compared to the quarter as well as Y Y. So, uh, all, uh, similarly, the EBITDA as well. Uh, is there a specific reason for this? Uh, let me tell you, this uh, particular quarter has the contribution from two ongoing projects, Sikova and the Greenfinity, which is the advanced stage of the completion. And these are the two projects which has contributed to because, uh, as you know, that. all the advanced stage projects that of the yon zion and trion those got recognized significantly on the completion in the last financial year and we have further launches and which is where the sales book has been generated those uh, revenue is going to be accounted as an uh, well as per the threshold limit achieved in the coming quarters so sikova and the greenfinity projects have contributed to this top 55 crore of the top line and that too with a one time or the first time recognition of about 7 crore uh, revenue recognized for the sale value of the greenfinity project which is having the now completion visibility so that one is also now recognized 
ओके ओके सर मेक सेंस सर माय सेक्स नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वुड बी ऑन दी एक्सपेक्टेशंस ऑफ द मार्जिन सो आर देयर एनी स्पेसिफिक एक्सपेक्टेशंस यू हैव सेट फॉर लेट्स से एफआई 23 एंड विल दे रिमेन द सेम और आर एक्सपेक्टिंग मोर इंप्रूवमेंट ऑन द सेम see overall the uh, inflationary pressure is going to definitely uh, put us uh, uh, or for that matter any industry player be uh, on the you know uh, margin pressure side but however the kind of sales which we have generated and the number uh, nature of projects the composition of the price point of the projects in which we in a we know we are launching and the kind of manhattan projects say, as an example where we have sold about 25% of the inventory so those kind of uh, initiatives and the project launches will definitely help us to uh, further accelerate on the margin momentum also okay okay sir okay understood um so my last question would be on basically uh, uh, related to the market so with many bigger real estate players uh, entering mumbai uh, specifically how do how do you see the real estate competitive landscape and uh, how will ajmera differentiate itself uh, from its peers so <clears throat> basically you know what uh, today real estate has become a uh, very you know with the complete with the invention of rera coming in and you know we personally see that real estate is going to become more significant to those players which have been in this business over a longer time who have delivered projects and uh, who have sustained you know probably a lot of uh, recessionary cycles up and down over the last couple of decades uh, we at ajmeras have you know been in this business over the last 53 years uh, secondly preference also come to players this uh, developers who are listed uh, that also gives us a tick in the box to us that we are listed today and thirdly with so much experience and so much deliveries along with listing i think this all becomes as a priority for the preferences of a buyer to you know you know invest his money and that can be clearly seen uh, with the kind of launches which we did and the results which we have got because you know clearly to buy a two and a uh, you know do a sales of 300 plus crores in just uh, you know two months time it is something which we see in a mark in a particular micro market and not overall so that itself shows the confidence uh, you know the market has in ajmer it just to add on the operationally like you know the case study of padala where you know we have all the offerings uh, to the market kind of a thing be it a mid market project like grandfinity at a advanced stage of the completion be it a just launch project which is a compact luxury uh, offering in uh, ajmera manhattan and be it a ready to move in inventory kind of a thing in which is available inventory left out into the tree on kind of a thing so the such kind of offering is taking it may be looking very optic to the market but it's really a business case for us kind of a thing so that's how we we try and uh, you know see a uh, uh, kind of the number kind of conversions which we have seen in the uh, sales velocity of manhattan okay okay sir understood understood uh, thank you so much for answering my questions i'll get back in the queue thank you so much thank you and all the best thank you our next question is in the line of g1 from sir r capital please go ahead yes so uh, mark is uh, you are saying that grinfinity and uh, sico has actually contributed to uh, this particular revenue so uh, can we assume that these two projects are having ebit of 35% you know the grandfinity project although it is a self funded however it is a affordable pro- product so it will have the ebitda or the project level uh, margin of about you know 20% kind of a thing and as well the sikova being the uh, boutique office space kind of a thing so both the projects will have the margin of around you know 20% kind of thing. but this time you are given 35% ebitda right so that's what i clarified this uh, time uh, the first uh, time revenue recognition has happened which is about 7 crore in the overall 55 crore top line from the uh, sales advance uh, sales value on the grinfinity project and that has really contributed on the top line and as well the ebitda and the pat line also okay but our normalized margin is about 10% as we have clarified and uh, as well into the investor presentation okay so uh, which are other projects which uh, which we have basically which you think uh, will be 
contribute to the PNL in this year, FY23. So that's more of a, uh, you know, the how the uh, threshold is going to be achieved, but having uh, velocity of sales for the Manhattan, we are very hopeful because of the front-ended approval cost already paid off in the December quarter. And uh, on the execution side also, we have spent significant amount. So that we, hope, we are hopeful that in FY23, we are uh, having that threshold achieved and we should be recognizing uh, numbers on account of the Manhattan sales. So what is the threshold? 25 percent. 25 percent. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to our participants, please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. The next question is on the line of Ritesh Kamdas. As a shareholder, please go ahead. Hi. Ritesh, your voice is not audible. Request you to use the handset and please proceed. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Better now. Yeah, uh, can, yeah. can you please uh, brief on your Bahrain and London projects as to how they are progressing in terms of sales and what would be the value that are expected to be realized in the near future? So as we have said earlier, Bahrain project has already been sold to someone else and we are no more developing the project. As a part of our value consideration and the plot land consideration, we are going to get area against the uh, the you know the money uh, or which is due to us and uh, we are getting about 10,000 odd square meters of uh, area from that which is in a in a today's market terms, which will be uh, roughly about uh, 200 plus crores, which we should be expecting to get, uh, where the project currently over there is under uh, RCC completion, which is that like superstructure is almost getting completed, and we should be expecting that to come very soon. Uh, now the finishing work and that is going on. So that is regarding Bahrain. Regarding London, uh, our projects have now been completed and they are under sales, uh, uh, you know, uh, already some projects have been sold. Um, there is a time gap between the sale finalization and uh, sale kind of closure, uh, which is where the period is currently. We are expecting to have money uh, coming in in, in, the, in tune of about 50 to 60 crores. Uh, sorry, about 80 crores over this financial year. Okay, uh, thank you. An update on your demerger. This is pending since so so long, right? Yeah. So last couple of uh, dates, which uh, you know, the final petition was to come on the board and uh, uh, was to be taken up for the final NCLD approval. The matter could not come on the board because of the heavy pressure on the queue kind of a thing. So we are also very eagerly waiting for the uh, petition because there is hardly anything. It's a plain vanilla demerger scheme. So we are hopeful that any you know, NCLT blessings can come once the hearing comes on the board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to our participants, please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Raj Shah from RS Investments. Please go ahead. Mm. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I have some questions. So uh, if, you can, if you can just share some details uh, with related to the Pantnagar land acquisition and when we can, uh, when we can see uh, the projects or any work to get commenced. So Pantnagar, uh, as we said, is, is a land which we have acquired from Tata Communications. The land was leased to leased by MADA. It's a MADA owned land, and uh, we have uh, taken the rights of Tata Communications. And now we are under development. We have already applied as we speak. We are already on the verge of just applying for permissions. Hopefully, in the next three to four months' time, uh, we should be able to get those permissions, and we should start construction on the same uh, immediately. So hopeful, our target is by year end, but maybe some one or two months here and there, but hopefully by then we should be able to commence work. And what are the projects that will be planned there? So it's a residential project uh, compromising of two, three and four bedroom apartments. 
ओके ओके एनी एनी साइज दैट यू वुड बी मतलब मीन द टोटल टोटल साइज ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट सो टोटल साइज इज 95000 स्क्वायर फीट ऑफ कारपेट एरिया व्हिच वी आर सेलिंग रफली एंड टू बेड यू वांट टू नो द इंडिविजुअल फ्लैट साइज और जस्ट द ओवरऑल साइज नो ओवरऑल ओवरऑल साइज एंड व्हाट वुड व्हाट वुड बी द रिलेशन दैट यू वुड बी टारगेटिंग सो आवर टारगेट इज अराउंड 25 टू 27000 रुपीस पर स्क्वायर फीट ऑन कारपेट एरिया सो व्हिच इज अबाउट 250 और क्रॉस प्लस ओके ओके थैंक्स फॉर दैट अपडेट and uh, uh, we we reported decent uh, the, uh, decent growth in this operational numbers so uh, can we expect the sustainability to continue from the for the uh, for the coming quarters well uh, this quarter was uh, one of uh, our best ones because we had a great launch uh, run in for manhattan however our endeavor is to uh, you know see we, while we may not have the same kind of numbers coming every quarter on quarter but we are looking with you know manhattan and now going under sustenance phase we have our existing projects in bangalore pune uh, and uh, you know uh, in in of greenfinity and sikova which is you know now coming towards the end of its completion so we will be looking at great numbers coming from you know all these projects and even bangalore projects nucleus is under completion so all those put together we will see a good number coming in however it is not going to be as every time every quarter being the same kind of a number coming uh, but definitely with uh, our existing projects and new projects like gatkopar and zoo we are looking at a great top line in this entire year okay my last question on this if any i'll be joining in the queue uh, if you can share some details on uh, business development opportunities so uh, as far as business development opportunity is concerned we are you know on a constant move to look at some projects which is under jvjda model and also a lot of discussions are going on under society redevelopment because that is something which has been uh, become our knack and we are looking at some successes coming in our way uh, very soon so uh these are the kind of models where we are looking at also uh you know some stress projects coming in from some financial institutions where, where we are under discussions hopefully we are we are looking at clicking and clicking a few so you know looking at three opportunities something like stress project something like jd jda and uh, third avenue is the redevelopment so all all aspects is where we are under discussion and talks uh, and we are hopeful to click a few in the coming months okay so effectively we can see uh, uh, like these new initiatives uh, coming through in q2 or q3 uh, well uh, we never know when this line up but hopefully between q3 and q4 we should okay okay thanks for the detail answer thanks a lot i wish you all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pipin taneja as an individual investor please go ahead Sir, I'm audible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just one thing you have written in the annual report regarding uh, uh, 5x growth. Is it on? Uh, so the few things have been mentioned. 4,300 crore accrue. Uh, we accrue the revenue of 4,300 crore. Is it the pre-sales of 4,300 crore in the next two years, or the revenue which will be recognised is going to be 4,300 crore? It is uh, 4,300 is a summation of the balance revenue from the existing project. and as well the sales value of the uh, to be launched and fully uh, uh, you know to be sold projects kind of a thing so this 4300 crore uh, is the revenue number is the revenue which will be booking in the pnl account or the pre sale number sir as i said clarified it is 4300 which is going to be revenue number going to be booked into the pnl account pnl account okay right sir Yes, sir. and uh, what will be? How many square feet will be selling in next two years, sir? So, as you have uh, seen our launch pipeline, like you know, we have the uh, existing uh, projects inventory available, and we have about a million square feet which is available to be launched within about you know four to six quarters kind of a thing. So, both this put together will definitely, as we have launched uh, Manhattan project, and we could sell. uh about 25% about 125000 square feet and in the quarter 157000 square feet on the carpet area basis so that particular with a 
existing uh, projects, advanced project and ready to move in inventory like you know the nucleus, commercial, nucleus, EN being the inventory available, the Greenfinity and the Sequoia inventory available which is advanced stage of the completion and the launch pipeline which is the Gatkoper and Ju. These are the few projects and the opportunities we are very confident to clock a good numbers going forward as well. Perfect, sir, perfect. So see, in the last few years, uh, our last year we did a last last year rather we did a five lakh square feet kind of a pre-sale. This yes. uh, last financial year we did like three and a half lakh. So uh, with this strong brand name, and now we're going to Pune, Bangalore, and the micro markets of Bombay as well. So MMR region, will we be? Are we in the you know that kind of a pipeline? We'll be having per year uh, two million square feet of uh, pre-sale. So can we see that forward two three? Years down the line, as you become aggressive. Well, uh, we our endeavor is to reach over there, and that's where we. If you see our entire plan, when we look at five X growth plan, that's where we are looking at. You know, uh, you know, the five X growth plan is with 2.9 million square feet of projects, so which we are looking to recognize or develop over the next four to five years time. Uh, with new projects coming in and new tie-ups coming in, definitely we are we will be able to reach. But whether it is two million or one and a half million or one million, uh, that's where our endeavor is to definitely move on 5x from what we are. So uh, we we wish to reach there, and that's where we will target to go. There. So, sir, is the focus more on the affordable segment or the basket of it? Or do we, by the end of the day, we target the per square feet realization on the PBT level? How do we take a call on a project, sir? So our basic call definitely is on, uh, you know, as we as Ajmeras are, you know, developing projects from probably, uh, you know, 20 lakhs to uh, 10 crores. So it, it's it's all bracket. It's not that we probably focus on mid segment or high end or or low end or affordable. But it is every. It depends on every project requirement and project velocity that's where we look at um, our our way of selecting a project is primarily based on its location its significance which adds value to our company and also uh, obviously most important is the bottom line and the return basis on our capital so uh, there are certain thresholds which we look at uh, and that's where we if, if those Stick in the box. We we probably select the project. Okay, perfect. And so, uh, with our strength of Bombay, how can we replicate uh, that towards in Bangalore and Pune? Because those are new markets for us. And is the brand Ajmera replicable to Bangalore as well? Sir? So obviously, uh, we are. Our our business started from Mumbai, and uh, we are very much recognized and, and known as a developer in, in 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 Mumbai. But having said that, Bangalore also has been set in our foot of operations over the last 10, 15 years, and we are uh, you know have done and delivered more than about three million square feet in in Bangalore. So. Uh, 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 we may not be, uh, you know, doing very, very great and large projects, but we continue to do our operations of half a million square feet, or you know, something like that, or probably 700,000 square feet, which currently our two projects are. That is Nucleus and Lugano, Florenza, and all of that. So that's where we 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 tend to uh, continue doing it, and we feel that you know that kind of velocity helps in our sustainable growth in micro markets like Bangalore. However, we are open for bigger or better projects coming our way, but we continue to run our operations in this sort of manner. And sir, your recent um, announcement on redevelopment as well in the annual report. So what sorry, your voice not audible. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, your uh, redevelopment, you mentioned about the redevelopment project in the annual report. Uh, am I audible now? I hope I'm audible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Better. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, in the redevelopment, sir, what exactly uh, are your thoughts? Because not everybody is, uh, uh, you know, uh, successful in this model. So, what uh, kind of a segment are we targeting uh, in redevelopment, sir? So, as as I said, uh, you know, uh, today any development or any buyer or a customer, be it a tenant, be it the society, be it a new buyer, they have more preference towards developers who are who have been in this business since long who have delivered and who are primarily also let's say if they are listed it ticks their boxes more 
they get better comfort because of the transparency their efficiency and their openness to be uh, uh, you know for whatever businesses we are doing so uh, we at ajmera believe in lot in transparency and being very open minded and that's why we are looking at a good amount of uh, new re redevelopment projects coming our way and that's where we see that you know last year with the kind of uh, government support which was there in terms of reduction in premiums which were there that helped us grab uh, this opportunity of juhu redevelopment and and that's how we are now looking at a few and hopeful to see uh, things should materialize going forward is there the clarity more clarity of land title in redevelopment that also interest us yeah because primarily all these land titles are uh, more or less clear because they are at least 30 40 50 years old building uh, society has been done Uh, there is no uh, hope uh, wherever we go hopefully obviously we check but title issues are minimal as compared to probably looking at a land outside so it gives us a as an edge but obviously it is uh, uh, you know the number of tenants which we have to deal with but that's okay that's part and parcel of our business and which we continue to do because at least legal legal wise things are more clearer probably than our other land Okay. And so, any uh, thoughts on develop, uh, redevelopment of clusters? Because government has come out with a policy of. So we are uh, in talks with a few projects where we can apply cluster redevelopment. Uh, hopefully, uh, if things materialize, we can probably announce soon. But uh, definitely, it's a policy-based matter, and which we are wherever applicable, we are trying to extract the best out of it and looking at a few on that lines. Commercial also would they be there and maybe the. Uh, no, we primarily are more residential. No, but will it be comprising of some part of commercial so that it, the returns become handsome? In uh, it, it it primarily is more like a convenience shopping, but most of the society redevelopments, unless they are on the main road or something like that, it's more of an enclosed uh, residential development. So primarily, all these are more residential. Highly obliged for your time, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question at this time, they may please press star and one. The next question is on the line of Mihir Desai from Desai Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. I had one uh, macro question. Uh, so uh, basically, as the industry is looking, uh, uh, the inventory uh, is, you know, uh, coming low. So. Uh, how how uh, this will affect the industry i just wanted to take from you sorry how has it affected what the inventory uh, yeah so as the inventory is coming down sir overall hmm. uh, so now do you see uh, that there will be new launches and the realizations also will go up because the demand is you know still intact well uh, our my take is that uh, real estate has a good uh, steady demand at least i what i see in the city of mumbai uh, with uh, new launches or you know old launches which were there a lot of inventory has almost been sold out or ready stock has almost been wiped out from the market going forward with last year there was a good amount of premiums which were been paid by developers and a good amount of launches have expected or being done as we did our manhattan project and obviously now we doing our going to launch our juhu project that, and that's how we are seeing a lot of other developers also launching good amount of projects so i think overall demand is there prices probably may remain steady it may not increase too much uh, with the supply coming up but uh, i think with this current pricing and if the uh, sales becomes still steady i think everyone should be in a happy place okay and uh, so as the, uh, the the prevailing inflation and the rising interest cost uh, will that impact the demand or uh, so how, how, what is your take on this uh, on a consumer point of view so my take is consumer are averse to at least you know at least personally i feel uh, if the home loans are around 7.5 775 percentage you know bracket i think they will still be okay sometimes this meant you know psychologically if it crosses 8 then there would probably be a little thing to worry and they would they would, i would see that they would there would be resistance uh, coming up and then there would be demand supply gap which will be starting but 
I think the government is doing a good job by keeping the home loan. Uh, obviously, they have increased, but uh, not making it as proportionate to the incremental inflation. So, I think overall it's a good thing and it's a good sign because real estate indirectly supports 220 or 50 other industries, which is uh, you know probably not getting affected today, and we are seeing a cycle moving. So, I think my personal take is uh, so so far as seven. Seven and a half, seven seventy-five as a percentage. I think that should still be okay. But beyond that, probably we'll see resistance. But so far, it's been good. Understood. And sir, lastly, on the land acquisition, so as the prices of land are also going up, so uh, do you think that uh, that will affect our, uh, the further new launches going forward in the industry per se? Well, as uh, land prices, uh, you know, honestly, it's more of a demand supply thing. But right now, in the city of Mumbai, there are a lot of uh, developments like JV, JDA, or a DM model project coming up, or some stress projects coming up, or the society redevelopment. So, which does not imply to probably big amount of money outflow at front, but uh, front ended. But obviously, there will be while mid cycle of the project you need to pay for the premiums and permissions uh, but overall i think there is a good amount of supply still available for uh, jv jda and society redevelopment projects in mumbai on the show so if i have further questions i'll join the queue sure thank you participants please press star and one if you wish to ask a question the next question is from the line of Pankaj Tanna from Varun Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know whether there's any clarity on uh, the location of your central Mumbai project, where you say it's around 489,000 square feet, launch probably September, t- I mean, uh, March 23, I think the uh, brochure said. So, which is the location that is there? Well, uh, as I would love to say, but I just want to don't want to reveal right now. Uh, when the right time is there, we will be definitely revealing. Uh, we just had in the last stages of our permissions and approvals and finalization of documents. So let us complete that and then we will announce. It's just in central Mumbai is all I can reveal right now, but going beyond that will be once we sign on the dotted lines. Okay, so central Mumbai would be what? Ghat Kopar, uh, that area? The entire central part of Mumbai starting from uh, probably Dadar to going all the way to Mulu. Okay. And, uh, yeah, otherwise, I mean, that's, that's the one thing uh, that I wanted. And the similar, the, the, there's a second project that's mixed use. That's also in the same area? Yeah, yeah. In and around that. Okay. So basically, these are the two uh, projects which are still uh, being worked on. Yes, yes. And any plans uh, to start something after, let's say you have reached a threshold of 60% booking on your Manhattan at Wadala? Uh, yes, of course, because man, Wadala has a good potential and we have a lot of, uh, we have a great amount of FSI available over there. So definitely, we are looking at a Tower 2 launch, uh, which should, in our opinion, should happen soon once, as you rightly said, we reach 60-70% of our sales, that's when we open Tower 2. And for that also, when you launch, you need to pay the development charges of 280-270 crores for a similar tower to uh, the authorities, or no? In fact, we'll be a little more because, uh, you know, as when we paid last time, <clears throat> we paid it uh, with a discount of 50% premium. Uh, okay. Now, those op- opportunity is not there. So, obviously, there will be a bit, uh, not all charges are going to be, uh, you know, 100%, but some will be. So, my guess is depends on the sizing and all of that, but with 280, it would be around 400 if it was the same size, just to give you a rough figure. Okay. So effectively today, whatever the inventory you're selling, people should buy it at whatever rate you're giving. Because the next price will probably be high about three thousand rupees, if nothing else. Absolutely. That's what we are. That will be because the price will rise, the cost will rise, and obviously the end product price will also be up. Okay. Great. And uh, when do you plan to, you know, uh, put in, uh, you know, take in the sales for Green Infinity, which is Balance and Sukova? 
for uh, by second third quarter this year this financial year end we should be able to complete uh, both the projects in terms of completion and in terms of sales also wow that would be great and uh, i think that's all i have to say and all the best uh, uh, keep doing the good work that you're doing thank you thank you the next question is in the line of anushka atri as an industrial investor please go ahead uh, am i audible yes yeah thank you thank you for the opportunity sir uh, so in the presentation uh, you know it's mentioned that we have four launches uh, in the next two years so would you be able to give details uh, of the same in terms of say lo- uh, location size or timeline so uh, yeah uh, so we have mentioned the uh, you know uh, sizes of the projects and as well the code name and the location gatkopar and juhu and as we speak we have already discussed at length about the juhu its progress we received the cc that we applied for rera and that particular launch is around the corner as we complete this regulatory process and so is the case with gatkopar we have completed the acquisition uh, from tata communication as we speak and uh, alongside we have already started our work on the plans and other regulatory aspects about the approvals so in terms of the other two projects the we have kept our preparedness on and we are hopeful to bring this this launches as well in the given timelines and uh, we will keep the momentum of our launches accordingly that's great sir that's very good to hear um so secondly uh, in the last two presentations we been seeing some esg related activities happening so do we have a road map or you know do you have any kind of uh, esg recognition as of now so as we uh, as we speak we have taken few uh, execution based uh, initiatives at site kind of a thing be it the choosing of the raw material be it uh, water uh, conservation be it energy efficient materials and such kind of a thing and in terms of the social angle we have been mindful of uh, taking the very relevant programs for the society and their beneficial be it uh, malnutrition for the women's empowerment and such kind of a uh, vocational education programs and uh, you know a conservation of water resources and such kind of a thing and in terms of governance we always been uh, you know uh, ticking all the boxes in terms of compliances of lodr say be regulations and rera now being the regulator kind of a thing so our focus is completely on the entire esg pack and we have received few recognitions out of our efforts be it a nucleus which is lead and edge uh, certification be it a zeon which is igbc certification kind of a thing so uh, we are very you know uh, uh, grateful about our appreciation of our sincere efforts on this esg side also got it so that's great thank you uh, and so one last one is there an update on the nclt regulating proceedings since uh, last quarter yeah so last two hearings uh, we could not get our petition on the board for the hearing as i mentioned on the earlier question as my response that we are very hopeful being a very plain vanilla demerger scheme so we are hopeful that once it comes on board it should be getting through and we should be having the uh, asset parcel traveling into spv and we can do the rest of the thing as per our plans mm, got it so okay all right thank you that's it from my side and uh, good luck thank you thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll take the next question from the line of ritesh kamdar as a shareholder please go ahead Pratik Shalani is unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, are we looking for any private equity in the company or any of its SPVs? So uh, yes, we are mindful that you know what private equity players and their deal can make a overall uh, uh, you know credentials about our project portfolio kind of a thing. However, we are as well you know playing balancing act on the our available cost of debt because as you uh, know that you know the repo rate and the overall cost of debt is also 
increasing so we need to be mindful of the overall cost side also because overall we are working on the inflationary pressure so we are playing balance uh, on the you know credentials of the priority and as well on the cost side so we are taking the very judicious and the business uh, uh, case and the decisions accordingly for the funding of the project okay okay thank you thank you the follow up question from the line of pankaj sanna from varun investments please go ahead yeah just one add on on that demerge plot or property that you are planning is that uh, are you planning a purely residential or it will be a purely commercial uh, business center sort of thing well uh, it's going to be uh, mixed by uh, i mean as of now we looked at you know about 3 or million square feet of commercial coming in but uh, we will still explore it as in how once it's done but but right now it is under planning of 3 million square feet of commercial okay but the uh, uh, being at wadala isn't the a residential prob- uh, probably a better sort of i, I mean we, you probably know better we but we have a good amount of supply in residential uh, over there so for us as a layout and you know when the land is such a big i think it's a mix use development as a, i mean contains or commands more demand <clears throat> as com- as compared to just uh, residential or just commercial so we are trying to make this as as efficient uh, as possible to have like a mixed use place which is work from uh, home and you know that way or work to work culture uh, looking at all those in a city like mumbai is what we endeavor to develop over there so it's something that you plan to do independently or you do it with some fancy a developer from singapore or somewhere we are open for that we have not like uh, since we are under uh, this uh, development we are at uh, looking at uh, either you know we are open with some private equity or uh, someone else as a investor coming in together who brings or adds value to the project definitely uh, we would look at this time okay okay thanks thanks sir thank you Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nitin for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. I really uh, thank each and every uh, participants and their questions and suggestions and insightful uh, questions, which will definitely help us and motivate us for uh, putting and uh, better performance and coming back with a very good set of numbers. Until then, still, uh, till then, uh, stay safe and stay happy. Thank you. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Ajmera Realty and Infra India Limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you